Hello, Heather. Welcome to the Soul Alliance Healthcare Podcast. I'm excited to talk to you today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Excited to be here. Glad to talk with you. Um, yeah, and talk all things yoga. <laughs> yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourself, your your yoga journey. Yeah, absolutely. So I am a yoga teacher who probably has a little different background than many yoga teachers. Um, I actually started more on the endurance um, side of the house. So I, um, after college, well, maybe I should say this, I actually started as a dancer. So that creative movement side of thing has been in Mm -hmm. me since I was about three. And I had the chance to dance until I was about 21. At the time, maybe dating myself, um, you didn't come out of college and find like a great dance program. So I needed something else because I really enjoy eating and I found I should probably have some balance. (laughs) So I started running, um, did a 5K, worked up to a marathon in my first year and then somehow found triathlon along the way and did this for quite a while until eventually I started being the person that friends would come to and ask questions. Um, And so got into endurance coaching that way. You know, once you start, you know, being that person, everyone's asking all the questions. Um, I am the one who likes to dive in and do all the research. So went then and got certifications and and coached endurance uh, training for about 10 years. So both running, triathlon, um, cycling specifically, swimming was never my favorite. So that wasn't something I um, spent a lot of time on. I kind of specialized helping the people who didn't want to swim either and like still being (laughs) able to do the Ironman and not really having to spend a ton of time in the pool. (laughs) So yeah, so so a little different approach. So yoga maybe popped in and out during Mm -hmm. that time. I feel like um, when I was uh, working at a gym as a run coach, um, you know, you got access to go to the different classes. And so I went to a yoga class about three times and went, well, we're doing the same thing every time. And going back to that dance background, that wasn't super interesting to me. (laughs) And so Mm -hmm. I went, maybe I just don't like this yoga thing. Um, And so it was really kind of a very small blip on my radar. Um, I moved to Colorado in 2012. And um, uh, it's very strange because it's a big triathlon culture, but there's also so many things to do out here. You know, there's snowboarding in the winter and hiking and you know, all, just so many outdoor activities. So I mm-hmm. started to train less. Um, I kind of moved away from uh, doing triathlon myself, which then kind of made me wanting to spend a bunch of time coaching a little less interesting. And so it just started kind of fading off. And then yoga started to become something I tried again and went, oh, okay. So they're not all like that first class I went to. It doesn't always mean go into this hot room and do the exact same poses, which mm-hmm. works for some people, but not the way my brain functions. Yeah. Um, so I found vinyasa, I found yin and went, okay, these things are actually kind of interesting. But I would still say I wasn't super consistent Um, and really not until I moved to the mountains and a friend of mine opened a yoga studio and being the good friend who wants to support (laughs) their business, I started going more regularly. So there was no like magical reason I started practicing regularly other than I wanted to support my friend. And then doing that, I realized, huh. Now that I've been doing this a couple of times a week, I'm noticing that I'm not as sore as I used to be when I get off my bike, for example, Mm -hmm. or I'm starting to feel a little bit more clear headed if I take a break in the day and do a yoga session. So just starting to kind of experience these benefits that, to be honest, I wasn't necessarily looking for. I didn't even know I should be looking for those. It was just something that I was able to find. And then coming Mm -hmm. to that consistency, I was able to see hey, this actually is is pretty amazing balance um, in all of my training and I need to do it a little bit more. So a little mm-hmm. bit of long-winded answer, but that's kind of how I came to yoga. Yeah, no, I love I love the long-winded answers because really, <laughs> I think it makes it just more relatable to everybody because they everybody has a different journey. And um, so I used yoga as a healing method. So I also am very active. I've done like a lot of the races. I did one mm-hmm. triathlon so, and I could oh, completely awesome. relate. I did a little baby one. Um, yeah. I did iron girl. You're probably familiar with iron yeah, girl, absolutely. right? Yeah. yeah. So that's a good beginner triathlon to do. Um, and I hated, I hated the <laughs> swimming. I hate, I love biking. I love running. Yeah. I hated the swimming and had a terrible, funny experience with the swimming where, um, uh, because it's so many beginners during Iron yeah. Girl, it's like ever I so many people grabbing onto me and like holding onto my legs, 
and and then I forgot to put my goggles on like the whole oh, time no. <laughs> they were that on my terrible. they were on my head um <laughs> it was so I was like oh my god thank god it was so short but um yeah that that was that was it for my triathlon career that was it just that I was like all right I did it <laughs> did not like that but um yeah so I could the yoga thing for me was kind of like um every time I injured myself somehow I would go to yoga and it always helped me heal so much faster. And then, you know, I always suffered from like piriformis syndrome, yeah. which was, you know, and yoga always helped me with that. And so Absolutely. I just started doing it regularly. And then I had a kind of devastating injury. I tore my hamstring completely. Oh my and gosh. Yeah. That was, that was a, the, one of the hardest, rec- I always say that was harder, a harder recovery than my stroke. Honestly, it really was because it was Man. just so and it's still to this day still hurts, but like, because I don't have that connection on one side, my body is kind of like off and I have to can't, I, it's almost like I have to do yoga to keep my body balanced. Cause this, my right side of my body is always super tight, you know, and I absolutely trying to compensate for the other side um, and keep you going. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so it's very interesting, but yeah, so now I do yoga almost every single day. And I agree with you where, you know, when I, the first couple of times I tried it, um, you really have to give it a chance because not only are there different types of yoga and so many different types of yoga, but every teacher is different. And I follow all these different teachers like on YouTube and stuff like that. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, well, I'm going to go to her today because I, you know, she, she challenges me and I'm going to go to her today. Cause she's like super chill. Like, you know, totally. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so. and I think that is a great point because, you know, just like I said, I was like, I, I, I obviously don't like yoga because I don't like this one class, <laughs> but you yeah. don't know that until you mm-hmm. experience it. Right. So yeah. I, I will talk to people and they're like, oh, I don't like yoga. And my first question back is typically tell me what yoga, like, what was that class like that you didn't like? Mm-hmm. Um, because it's almost like th- there's so many things like this in, li- in life that there is so much variety, mm-hmm. but you don't know until you know, to even ask the question of, is this what it's supposed to be? Or are there other options that I should explore? Yeah. Um, cause especially I- you know, as you start to learn more about yoga, as I'm sure you did too, I found I really like vinyasa. Um, I mm-hmm. like, I like slower ones as well. I like yin. I like restorative. Mm-hmm. Didn't even know these were things. Like, I think I went to my first yin class probably five or six years after I started to get more regular in yoga. And mm-hmm. I was like, what is this? And yeah. my personality is if I don't know what it is, <laughs> I want to go try it. Um, but that's not the case for everybody. And so if you do have a bad experience, it's, it's to your point, even looking at the teacher, maybe mm-hmm. the teacher wasn't a good fit for you. Maybe mm-hmm. the style wasn't a good fit. Um, yeah. yeah. Maybe it so wasn't what I was options. ready for at that time. Cause also right. sometimes some of the teachers are teaching more than like, like just the physical movements they are going into mm-hmm. the spirit spirituality aspect of it. And so like when I was younger and I was doing all my running and stuff like that, I still run. But when I was like super, super into that, uh, like that running crowd, um, if I went to a yoga class and they start playing some music in the front and chanting, I'm like, what is going on here? And now <laughs> yeah. I'm like, now I'm like, yeah, now I'm like down with that. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, what stage are you at? What are you looking for? And, uh, and I think that, yeah, people need to be like more open-minded to like having fun with it. You know, it doesn't always have to be, I feel like yoga could also be sometimes super intimidating when you walk into a yoga studio, especially for the first time. And so like maybe beginner yoga or maybe yoga going with one of your friends who goes to a class who can kind of like introduce you to it. But like, how can I make this, you know, more like, fun more you know so as a yoga teacher like yeah. what would you say to the person who's like intimidated to going or they maybe have like they're you know not comfortable wearing the clothing that most people wear yeah. during yoga all those things absolutely and i actually just had this conversation with my mom in the last couple of weeks so i can tell you exactly what i told her yeah um, clothing wise it doesn't matter you could wear mm-hmm. sweatpants and a t-shirt Um, really whatever you're comfortable in. I would just consider that um, down dog is a really common pose. And so your hands are going to be on the ground and your hips are going to be in the air. So just, you don't want your shirt to slide over your head if you're feeling uncomfortable. So maybe something even that you could tuck into your pants. This isn't Mm -hmm. yoga clothes. 
but there is no real yoga clothes. It's really something yep. you can move in and that you're comfortable in. And so that you're focused less on your body and like what you look like and more about the movements. Mm -hmm. So that would be what I would say to what you want to wear. I like wearing cute yoga leggings and tops, but not required at all. So if that's fun for you, go shopping for a new outfit. If that's not fun for you, wear something you got. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then if you, there's really two choices. Some people, just like going to the gym for the first time, that can be really intimidating. And so where home workouts can be a really great way to just start moving, home yoga workouts are a fantastic way to start mm -hmm. moving. And there's a ton of options and nobody else can see you, which mm -hmm. is good and bad. So yeah. the good part yeah. of that is, yeah. <laughs> right, you feel less self-conscious. So if that is like your barrier to going, oh my gosh, start at home. Mm -hmm. um, the downside is there's no teacher to give you any feedback. Yes. And I am the first person to tell you, your pose does not have to look like some textbook picture. Um, it's really more about what it feels like in your body. But for a lot of people, myself included, I like that feedback just to make sure I'm moving in the right direction, that it's kind of like what it was intended to, and then I can make it comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you miss a little bit of that feedback if you're at home um, and, and not having a camera on with like a live class. Yeah. Going to the studio. So if, if you're, if that you're not in your head about that, and I encourage you not to be, the studio is supposed to be welcoming and encouraging. Um, you know, everyone's encouraged to just be on their mat and not be looking at their neighbor. In mm -hmm. fact, you'll hear that in classes a lot. I would just go tell the teacher, Hey, this is my first yoga class because mm -hmm. then they can watch you in, in a way of, like helping you. And yes. they know I'm going to give different cues if it's somebody's very first class to really help them find success. And I'm going to be also watching for them to be looking comfortable versus somebody who looks extremely uncomfortable. And again, how can we make some tweaks to make this work for you? Yeah. If I have no idea it's your first class, I may not have that same lens on that mm -hmm. helps me to give you the best experience. So just communicating with your teacher, your teacher wants to help you. That's literally why we do this. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that would be my, my two big pieces of advice. And then just start like whatever one of those options sounded the least intimidating, do, do that. Um, yeah. And don't overthink it. I think that's also a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And this, I, I mainly do yoga at home because mm -hmm. I live in a very rural area and there's no yoga studios within 40 minutes. And yeah. so I don't really have much of a choice. And I started doing <laughs> that through, um, the pandemic too. Like when we couldn't yeah. go to the yoga studio or I just didn't want to. <laughs> so totally. it's like, so, um, yeah, there's so many people online that do it and they do have videos. Um, I don't know what they call them, but they, they'll, teach you how to get into a pose, you know, yep, so it's not absolutely. a class. Most of the teachers on uh, YouTube or wherever you would find a video have, you know, they have these, and I would encourage people to do those, especially if you're like struggling to get into a pose. And um, also going back to the clothing thing, you should see some of the things I wear when I practice. Yoga because if you're I'm at home, home, you can be in your PJs. <laughs> yeah. I a lot of times am in my PJs Yeah, and I do find wearing like joggers or sweatpants, really comfortable as long as they're super stretchy because, yes. you know, you don't want it to like restrict your movement or anything like that. So it's like, yeah, some of the things I wear and then, you know, when you're at home too, you could strip down when you get hot. Like you can't usually do that at a yoga studio. So completely, <laughs> completely. I, I'm a, I'm a proponent of uh home yoga, but I do miss the studio because there's, yeah. you know, there's a community and it's more fun and you make like-minded friends and it's just, uh, getting different perspectives on mm -hmm. the, the teachings of yoga and learning different things from different yoga teacher teachers that you do breath work too, right? Yes. Yeah. So every single one of my classes, um, in the studio always mm -hmm. start with breath work. And the only reason I said in the studio is when I teach virtual, um, mm -hmm. one of the big requests is short classes. So I tend to yeah. separate them out. So if you were to come to my virtual studio, I have a whole library of breath work. And then, so then the yoga asana classes tend to be a little bit more focused on the asana. And then I encourage students put them together. If you have time, mm -hmm. do like a box breathing, um, video first and then do an asana flow, because that's what I would teach you if you came 
to a studio class. Yeah. Um, Studio classes tend to be 60, 75 minutes. You're going to find mostly, I find 60 minutes is the Mm -hmm. most common. And so then I have time. I start every class with breath work and we'll go through a lot of different types. Um, A lot of times it's maybe aligned to what our purpose of the class is going to be, Um, you know, and we'll try to find a breath work that really helps you um, find a similar feeling, or Mm -hmm. we'll just work on understanding how much the breath can manipulate your entire day. So I like to explain um, Ujjayi breath, which a lot of people have at least heard of maybe, and you're like, what is that? Um, We practice that while we move quite often in vinyasa or in a rocket yoga, and Mm -hmm. that is mostly in your upper chest. So, and that is a more up-tempo, like excited, energetic breath. Mm-hmm. So not the thing you want to practice if you've been really stressed out at work and you need to bring your energy down, then we would do something that's more in your belly. Mm-hmm. So it's a nice way to be able to give these tools that you can practice on and off the mat. Um, and we just kind of incorporate them on in all the classes. And I also finish with breath work just to kind of bring it full circle and help you kind of ground back down. Yeah. Um, I think to your point, a lot of people don't think of that as yoga, right? Like Mm -hmm. yoga is just the movements, right? And the movements came later. Um, At the beginning, it was more about the sitting. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I always say the movements are so that you can sit because when we're, a lot of us are very busy all day and so our minds are going a million miles a minute. And if you told me, okay, Heather, now go sit down and be quiet and close your eyes. I'd be like, "Mm, that's probably not going to happen right now. (laughs) But if I could go move first, and then sit down. I've gotten out of my head. That to-do list has kind of floated away without me even noticing. Mm-hmm. Then you can sit in in silence a, a bit easier. Um, and so I, that's really the whole point of all that movement. So coming back to breath is a meditation practice. And mm-hmm. so one of the core tenets of yoga as we started with. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 one of the things that really that I can resonate with yoga is doing some of those more challenging yoga classes and, you know, you're in a, you're in maybe a difficult pose, you know, you're challenging Mm -hmm. yourself, you're challenging, challenging your strength or even other things too. But at the same time, um, you're trying to stay connected to your breath. So you're trying to breathe through it. So you're breathing through the discomfort and it's very, it's it's just like a metaphor for life, you know, Mm -hmm. but we have all these things um, that happen to us where we have to work through like difficult things in our lives. And we have to learn to be able to move through those emotions in a way where we we can, we can stay level-headed and balanced. And I find that yoga is a good teaching tool for that. Just how to regulate, you know, regulate yourself and be able to absolutely know and have the confidence that you could work through these difficult things. And so that's what I always think about, you know, when I'm in like a difficult pose and I'm like, Oh Jesus, you know, and, and, and the yoga <laughs> teacher's like talking about something and you're like, Oh my God, move on. Come on. Like I can't, <laughs> I'm going to collapse. Meanwhile, I don't have to stay in that position. If it gets too difficult, I know I can go into, you know, you know, downward facing dog or, right. you know, child's, child's pose or something pose, like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I know I don't have to do this, but you're like, I'm like, this is part of it. This is why I do this. Like, so I can, yeah, you're practicing for those difficult things, right. Yeah. In like a way less consequential environment. So mm-hmm. yeah, you holding a really hard bind in I don't know, like a extended side angle. And you're like, to your point, what, and I am guilty of this sometimes, you know, we're just mm-hmm. going to take two breaths and then you go over and you help somebody and five yeah. to 10 <laughs> breaths later, they're like, oh, you can get out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That whole time you're like, I am still breathing. I am still mm-hmm. focusing. But then think about then later in the day and you're in traffic and somebody cuts you off and mm-hmm. you're like, right, we're supposed to come back to that breath that we can breathe through this and not mm-hmm. let this could completely destroy all mm-hmm. of our, our day. You practiced that in another uncomfortable position. And so yeah. now maybe that makes it the tiniest bit easier when mm-hmm. you hit that really frustrating situation a little later in your day. Yeah. It's perfect. I think. Yeah. Um, what other healing modalities do you use during your classes? Yeah. So sound is another one of my specialties. And this one is a little harder to translate online, at least for me so far. So Mm -hmm. I tend to um, use sound mostly for local live classes. Mm -hmm. Um, But I have found this to be kind of game changing. Um, I am the person who likes the very energetic class, but then I also really like the down tempo sound bath experience. And if you haven't been to one of these 
Maybe let me try to paint the picture of my first sound bath. I was on my very first yoga retreat and this guy comes into our open air shallow, right? So there's like a wood floor and like one of those um, grass ceilings above you and like open air on the sides. And we're all like set up our mats and blankets and pillows in a circle around it. And this guy is in the middle of the room with this giant gong. Yeah. Um, I mean, like huge, like as tall as me and just like really big, wide, circular gold gong. And what they tell you is just, there's nothing you need to do. Just close your eyes and just listen. And Mm -hmm. if you fall asleep, totally okay. And I would have swore that he was moving that gong and would like put it right next to my head and play right behind me, or he'd bring another instrument and play right behind me. And that's Definitely. You couldn't have moved that gong. So like but yeah. it's just from person to person, but it's just those vibrations that come out of that are so powerful. And that is what is interacting with um, the water in your body and just kind of like shaking things up so that it can settle back down. Mm-hmm. Um, at the start of my sound baths, I always use this analogy and one day it's not going to work because it's a little bit dated, but there's been more Jurassic Park. So I feel like people still yeah. <laughs> can picture Jurassic Park. So if you remember that scene in Jurassic Park, where they're in the Jeep and there's like a cup of water or coffee in the cup holder. And like the T-Rex comes right next to it and his giant foot comes down right next to the Jeep and you see all the ripples in the water. Mm -hmm. That's what happens in your body. And so I feel like everybody can picture that. And so think of all those ripples while all the different sounds are playing. And the reason we use lots of different sounds is everything vibrates at a different frequency. So my desk in front of me vibrates at a frequency. My brain vibrates at one frequency, my heart at another, you know, you're you're all the different pieces, Mm -hmm. but your heart and my heart are not necessarily on the same vibrational frequency. We don't know. It's, it's just different vibrations. And so we want to hit different vibrations of sound so that it can interact with different parts of your body. And so the reason we play so many different instruments is to hopefully find those different interactions. so We can find that nice resonance and then it kind of settles back down. So you don't have to do anything. You just allow the sound to interact. And, um, it's, it's typically pretty powerful. I will have people who, who cry and it's just a release of emotion. I'll have people who leave feeling super happy or really quiet and mellow, or, Mm -hmm. you know, you'll get anger during my sound training. One of the girls in also one of the teachers who was in the training um, got really angry during one of the ones I did. And I was like, oh my gosh, did I do something wrong? And and no, you just need to like, sometimes just letting that anger out, you feel so much better. It's just stirring stuff up, which mm-hmm. quite often interacts with emotion and then you leave. So that's, uh, again, some one of those things that doesn't feel like what I would have ever expected to be part of yoga. Um, but it's a really powerful modality. Um, I will sometimes use it at the end of an asana class as well, but we do um, host uh, workshops. Um, and I host a lot of times with another sound practitioner so that we've got four hands that can play instruments um, instead of just two. So yeah, that sounds, <laughs> that sounds really cool. I've never experienced it, but I would love to. And it also sounds fun. You know, it just yes. sounds like a good time. So yeah. <laughs> now you talked about you do virtual classes. Yeah, so, talk so a little I, bit about that. Absolutely. So I've been teaching for several years local. Um, in fact, I came out of teacher training and immediately started uh, teaching locally um, because I have such a movement background. Um, yoga. Mm-hmm came very naturally to me and I kind of pull all those things together. Um, But I realized that I was only being able to help people who could come to class at the time that I teach. And I teach at noon (laughs) several times a week, which I love because it gives me a day, a time to break up my day, but that doesn't work for everybody's schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I thought, how can I make this easier to get to a yoga class with me, no matter where you live or what your job is and what time you have available to practice? Um, Mm -hmm. So I launched a virtual studio um, in February that allows you to get unlimited classes that are kind of in this growing library. Um, The library probably has about 30 different classes in there right now. And I add about one to two every week. So it'll just get bigger and bigger. Um, My audience kind of asked for most of these to be short. So I would say 80% of them are less than 30 minutes. And then because I like long classes, I also (laughs) tend to throw in one or two that are like 60 to 75 so that you have both. Yeah. And, And to be honest, when I'm practicing at home, 
more often than not, I kind of want a short practice mm -hmm. um, and I will keep my longer practices for the studio. But then sometimes I have more space and I want to do both. So giving you options for both of those. Um, like I mentioned, it's not just movement. So I have breathwork practices that are in there. Um, and then that way you can start to combine the classes and create what you want. So in my perfect world, you would start with one of my breathwork classes and then you would move to an asana class and then you'd have a nice long 10 minute shavasana. Um, yeah. doesn't live in a perfect world. So if that doesn't work, Mm -hmm. Take a 10-minute class. <laughs> That's yeah. also great. Um, so my I just want people to be able to practice. And where where I've started to have those benefits that I mentioned, I only saw that once I started going to class regularly. So I was practicing mm -hmm. two times a week, three times a week, kind of depended on the week. That's when you start to experience experience the benefits. So I want to make that easier for you. So even yeah. if you do make it to a studio once a week, I love that. I love in-person studios, but maybe then you could add a virtual class onto your calendar. Now you've got twice a week that you're practicing. And so you're just starting to be able to find those benefits a little bit um, more quickly that way. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wouldn't, I don't know what I would do without virtual <laughs> classes. Honestly, it's, I love it. So how can people connect with you? You know, how, yeah. where, where do you hang out? Uh, how can they find you? Yeah, I hang out mostly on Instagram. That is my favorite. And I recently changed my name. This was very traumatic for me. <laughs> I've always been Fit Aspire for about 10 years. I think okay. you can probably still search and find it that way. But I am now on Instagram as I am Heather Blackman. So it's my name. Okay. Um, nice and easy. Um, and then if you're interested in maybe some of the free um, resources that I offer and maybe learning about the virtual studio, I created a unique uh, URL for your listeners. So you can find find that information at fitaspire.com slash soul aligned. And that'll take you to some of my free resources and also a trial of the studio. I've actually never offered a seven day trial before. Um, so I just flipped it on last night so that you guys could give it a shot. Oh, that's so exciting. So that'll all be in the show notes. Um, so people could check it out. So definitely go check that out and uh, visit, check out the free resources. And I'm definitely going to check it out myself. It was a pleasure to have you on and talk to you and uh, really cool to be hanging out with a fellow yogi slash runner type person. <laughs> I like that. So thank you for coming on. It was nice Absolutely. to meet you and talk to you. Yeah. Great talking with you. Thanks, Tina.